yes, baby dolls, welcome back to Crypto's Juiciest News. Yesterday, we had a bit of a tumble for Bitcoin, but now we have moved our way to 70,000 American dollars and Ethereum is around 3,500. I'm going to show you the charts now. Do you remember, friends, we drew this magical triangle that was happening in the land of Bitcoin and then it poked under and then it poked over. Let's see. I'm going to show it to you right now. <laughs> this is so funny, man, friends. We, this was happening yesterday. We're like, oh, the triangle. And we're like, no, I've got so much PTSD. Here we are right now. You see, friends, that's why I don't, I'm not personally, when I trade, right, I don't trade with these lines and triangles just because sometimes they poke under or over. You got to do thick lines. I'm a trend guy. The trend is your friend. That's why I use the super trend. So, friends, if you're trading, right, you can usually trade, you can go against stuff. So you're looking for divergences and stuff here and there. Or I like going with the trend. So I'm always, I'm always looking for a trend. That's why you'll see me always put the weekly super trend up. And you can see, okay, we flipped green. We get the first pullback and that's it. I know a lot of you seem to be loving that and, and fighting for it all the time. But here's the thing. You miss the tops. You miss the tops. However, you can stay along with the whole ride. Because if you're looking for tops, by the way, every step of the way, you see tops. You just see tops everywhere. You see, they see 50,000 divergences. You see 50,000 top signals. But, you know, with this, friends... You might have, like, for example, at the very, very top, there might be a big triangle, but Bitcoin will break it down and people might be able to get out early. But look, these things, mostly random, okay? And you'd, you'd think that by the end of it, the end of the cycle, there'll be a lot more big counter signals or signs of euphoria. We've got a lot of juicy information today. We're going to go through CPI, otherwise known as the Kippy. There's also fake DeFi Uniswap got attacked by the corrupt SEC. They now are called a securities dealer and they're issuing technical securities. Isn't that funny? Isn't that cr crazy, though, friends? Look at the four-year cycle, the fractal, man. It's still playing out exactly as it has been before. I guess we'll just see where it all plays out, right? Because right now, with the US CPI, it's actually been delaying the US Fed rate cut expectations now. But we'll get to that in a bit. This is the ETH BTC chart, friends. A lot of people are just scared. They're scared that this thing will come back and crack down. Look, man, you can't control any of it, friends. It's just that usually around Bitcoin halvening, you got to think as well, right? If you're a narrative trader, I know a lot of you watch, uh, I know, for example, Randy Boo from Crypto Banter Show, he's more, they, a lot of people love to follow the narrative, friends. Personally, I don't follow narratives. I just hunt cheap prices. That's it. Because, look, I'll tell you right now, friends, who's the wealthiest of them all? It's not someone who hunts the narratives. Warren Buffett doesn't say, oh, I'm going to get this company because I think there's going to be a narrative in five years where the U.S. Fed's going to do this. and they're gonna... He doesn't do that. He finds cheap companies. And I have adopted that principle from him and, Warren and Charlie Munger. I'm like, wow, okay, you guys ignore the stories. You just find cheap companies. That's it. Well, I'm, I'm in crypto, friends. We've got to use a different mindset here. I just find cheap coins. That's it cheap community strength. And sometimes, obviously, what I'll do is I'll look at the strength of a community. For example, Dick with Bart. And I go, okay, they're attached with Tang Gang, HOA, and Pulse Chain. I know Pulse Chain's undervalued. So when it comes to these coins, I go, the amount of activity and the memes and everybody growing, I go, the ferocity of this, it does not represent what the market cap says right now. Even though it's like it's under two, three million market cap, that doesn't make sense to me. It, I think it should be like 20 million. Personally, and I think if Pulse Chain goes higher, it could reach 100 million. That's what I'm playing. I'm pretty much playing for. But no, no, so I didn't say, oh, I'm expecting in nine months that that uh, you know maybe uh, Gary Gensler posts a picture of Dick with butt, and then people go nuts with it. You know, what I mean, I don't. I never really think of the narrative. Never try to predict it. There are people who can do that. Very rare, and they're very flu they're flukes themselves. That's why I said it's not nice to go around telling people they're fluke shots. But the stats don't lie. You'll find that. People who predict a the narrative, they'll get it good for one, two, three, four months-ish. They'll get hot. The next ones, they're not as hot. And then pretty much they're useless in a year. I'm not even kidding. A lot of people. And I learned this by example by checking out the DeFi guys back in 2019 and 2020. The people who made a 1,000x on the synthetics and all these, right? All these people are duds now. You know, and I'm sorry to say, no, no, sorry, just they're, they're duds, friends. They, they got it completely wrong. So everybody who binked 2019 and 2020, the DeFi thing for crypto, and they made they, they invested in the right ICOs as VCs. Guess what? They completely blew the hell up in 2021. They just got it completely wrong. They invested in the wrong DeFi. They kept investing in DeFi stuff. But the market had moved to memes, gaming, metaverse, NFTs, new DeFi, which is Ponzi DeFi, which is obviously it's, it's a joke term. We had you had Olympus Dow, Luna, even Hex was considering that DeFi 2.0 earning yield stuff. So that's pretty much where the market had gone to and they were not able to adapt. So this this is also common in hedge fund um, trading and all these friends. People are really, really good in a certain period of time, then they just basically lose their edge. That's why if you bink it, 
you got to take advantage of it. You got to hedge yourself. That's why sometimes people buy property or go and store some money in Bitcoin or Ethereum so you protect yourself. So we're waiting to see what happens with Ethereum, right? That's pretty much that's the the big one. Friends, remember the narrative, friends. This is by the way, this is the Ethereum monthly chart. See, it's a little red one now. That's okay. It's making a high low. Remember, <clears throat> after the Bitcoin halving, which is very very soon, what's going to happen to Bitcoin's narrative after that point? Okay, you already have the ETF, and now you. The next halvening is in four years. The pretty much, what's next? What's next? Well, they say, oh, bigger and better. I get, see, I mean, pretty much market prices, prices do win at that point, okay? So don't forget, there is 140,000 Mt. Gox Bitcoin still out there to be distributed. But here's the thing. People are going to say, no, 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 it's priced in. We've known about it for a long time. Yeah, but it's not going to feel good, is it? You're just getting dumped on. It's very heavy. All these people, fake diamond hands, they get the money out. They're probably going to dump. So it just pretty much will usher in, I'm guessing, more Bitcoin dominance collapsing. So we're still waiting for that big moment. This is the Bitcoin dominance chart right now, friends. A lot of people still believe if we have a left translated cycle that this thing is going to go up and it's going to squeeze and squeeze, squeeze. Look, it can. That's what it did last time before a big collapse and then everything comes back down. But I won't be surprised if I see something like this, right, where the Bitcoin dominance comes back down to this floor. We can't break it. We come back up and then we do something like that. And then pretty much if we look at it now, that will usher in a Bitcoin uh, if Bitcoin gets flipped. So it goes back down, comes back up, fakes out, and then maybe that next halving, that's, that's it. That's bang. This is the flipping. This might be the flipping. I mean, I would hope this thing just goes down straight away, but I'm just not so sure when it comes to you know the disparity and dispersion between Ethereum and EVMs and everyone joining Solana. So, you know, people are thinking like, how much extra retail money can I put into Ethereum now? I can't really do that. It's for bigger whales. So that's pretty much what, you, what you're seeing. Now, the CPI, friends, otherwise known as the Kippy, came out hotter than expected. So just to let you know, remember, I've made a video last year, and I'll repeat it for you. If you if you ever see any of these news, friends, don't even look at the news, okay? You go to TradingView, type in USO2Y. That's the US two-year government yield, okay? This thing is a cheat code. It's literally a cheat code. The US Fed follows this. They, they follow this. That's right. They pretty much follow it. They have the bug eaters as well. You know, but that, that, I made a video on that, but you can go visit, revisit that on another time. So if you notice, on the news event, we can put on a one-hour chart, the kippy came out. Look what happened instantly. The bonds went up. So what you do is you look at the right-hand side. So the bonds were trading at 4.7% yield. They went up to 4.973. So you can basically see what they did was, friends, see 0.26% plus. That is a hike. So effectively, what it does is it's predicting the next two years average yield. So if hot data comes out and then this, this, this US two-year yield went up, remember that's hiking rates. If it went down, they're, pri they're, they're cutting rates, as you can see. See, we had a hot data. Look at this. It spikes up. So because it went up 26 basis points, you're like, oh my gosh, you guys have removed a full cut from the market. And that's why as that bond yield went up, the bond price goes down because it's the inverse of it. And the stock market, the stock market goes down. The bond price goes pretty much um, down in line with it, actually. So that is the funny thing because they've been printing money, friends. They're keeping the bonds and the stock markets up. And then we let go of this, this type of stuff reacts. See, the, the yields go, the, the bond, bond yields pretty much because the bond price will go down. The yield go up because they're inverted. And the stock market like has some jitters. But you look at the stock market, it was roaring the whole time. So this is pretty much your cheat code and look at this. But however, if you want to look at the absolute biggest juice of all, it is this. You understand? This is what happened, friends. If you remember, we've been watching in June, okay, in June, friends, this used to be around a 65% chance of a rate cut. It used to be 65% chance for June. Remember, we were like expecting, hey, if they cut rates in June, that might coincide with the altcoin mania peak and that might be you have to get out. Well, it's no longer a 60% chance of a cut. It's only 19%. A 19% chance. So basically, it's now 80% chance they're not going to change. It's going to they're going to hold. So they pre they might have. So this is funny. People think that the old season's cancelled now. I'll go no no no. That just means we go on for longer. We go on. That's pre pretty much. That's how the universe works. Friends. That's how the universe universe works. Because remember, there's all these sideline people. They don't know when to get in. So they're going to wait for the US Fed to cut rates and everyone to tell you see. But friends, this is what's going to happen. Okay, you're going to see it. See, Bitcoins move up from 16K to 70K. When they finally cut rates, everybody, all the maxis, and everyone out there, everyone just be caught of each other. They'll say, look at, look at what they did when they were hiking rates. We went from 16K to 70K. Just imagine how high we're going to go when they cut rates to zero. That's what everyone's going to be thinking. And that's why it's going to be dangerous to be holding long. That's going to be the euphoria, the final people run in. 
that's going to be like, ah, I had my money on the sidelines. I've got to get in. They're cutting rates. And that's when we should be like, oh, the weak, weak, weak hands are finally coming in. Okay. If you want to have a look at when is the Fed rate expected to be cut for July 31st, it is a 38% chance of cut. Actually, E's 44% chance because it's got more than one cut priced in here. The 6% chance I'll just cut twice. 44% chance of a cut, but more of a no change. This is end of July, July 31st. That's crazy. That means we might run all of June, all of July. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. We don't know. And then September, friends, September as well, 67% chance of a cut. So they're expecting around July, September, somewhere there, July or September for the rate cut. And that, look, we don't know if it's exactly going to line up. We don't know, but it's something to watch out for because it happened in 2019 where they held rates, market ran up. The month they cut rates, you had to get out of Bitcoin at 13,000-ish, and then you had to wait until the zombie virus happened, pretty much because the collapse of everything happened and it all coincided. Now, the biggest news of the day, friends, the corrupt SEC has officially labeled Uniswap as a securities dealer, and they have called Uni a security. Uniswap Labs and its founder, after pooping on Richard Hart and Hex, they are now asking the crypto industry to help them fight the corrupt SEC. So I'm going to show you right now. So, friends, this is a sarcasm post. I know it's very long for a sarcasm post, but I want to show you right. Because, look at this, because Gary Gensler has now taken the fight, SEC moves to sue Uniswap in a bid to, to strangle it. Look, I've even written here, Binance and Coinbase are now illegal securities dealers. Why? Because, you know, friends, everybody wants to delist Hex. The corrupt SEC is now taken on Uniswap. Uniswap is now officially a securities dealer. Because, friends, this is what happened. They delisted Hex. You all remember it. You were all here, okay? They delisted Hex. We have all the evidence. Uh, it's still there. Not even real evidence, right? Look at this. Look at this. Not available. Unsupported asset. So this is this is the funniest part. I mean, by the way, obviously, we're joining Uniswap. So we're going to be the better people. We're not going to have soy virgin pencil necks. We're not going to have rounded elbows. We're going to have very pointy elbows. And our chairs are going to be very squeaky. And we're going to join them, okay? We're going to join them because we're going to be better than they are. Because they left us out to dry. But we're going to step up. We're going to step it up, all right? Because at the end of the day, Uniswap platform lets you trade honey honeypots, scams, rugs, all these other tokens that are actually securities, okay? And now they let you trade their own tokens as security, but they took out Hex. Why? Because, because of the news. They saw it in the news. They go, oh, oh Richard Hart, oh, it's called securities dealer. You know, it's pretty much, look, you reap what you sow. You report you so here are all the all these pictures from before we cancel Uniswap, clown of DeFi working together, fake DeFi, movement not available, speech not available, adding middlemen. That's pretty much all it as you can see, friends. So the hypocrisy coming in now. We were all here. They turned their backs, they tried to crush us, they tried to send our coins, pretty much went to zero by itself anyway. But they tried to send it negative numbers. Okay, that's how bad it got. So here I am mentioning, friends, it's literally clown versus clown now. Which clown are you going to go for? Okay, you saw the pictures. It's going to be Hayden or corrupt chairman Gary Gensler. Guess what? I think I have to choose Clown Adams as my team just because, you know, friends, it's it. we're going to be better people. Understand, we're all on the same side. The Hexagon community, okay, Pulse Chain community has been strong, read through so much pain. Don't forget, your friend Sami here made countless videos in 2023 about karma. That's why, are you listening, P-Hex Maxis? I hope you're listening. All right, I told you, reap what you sow. Okay, I don't like living in this world where everybody points fingers and everyone thinks they're the king. Because guess what? You, as soon as you call yourself a king, the people come for your neck. All right? That's pretty much what happens, okay? So is Hayden Adams going to be consistent now because they took down Hex? You can't swap Hex, right? And you and MetaMask as well, which is fake DeFi, by the way, controlled by the bug eaters themselves. MetaMask and Uniswap. Are you guys now going to ban Unitoken? Are you going to do that? Are you guys going to hand yourself into the police now because you're allowing people to trade unregistered securities, which is very illegal because of the Unitoken? Guess what? MetaMask is making way more money allowing people to trade securities than anybody else with their fee. Okay, so don't you ever think MetaMask is like one of the biggest culprits in all of these. It's funny how they pick sides when it comes to this, okay? So you reap what you sow, okay? Uniswap Labs made their bed. Should we let them lay in it? What do you think, friends? Now, obviously, my post was um, it was sarcasm, but friends, you got to you got to you got to learn. All right, some like life advice. When people stab you in the back and they are drowning, you don't rescue them straight away. You just look at them. 
you look at them and you go, oh, that's funny, you're drowning. I wonder if I should help you or not. That's what you do, okay? Eventually, you do give in, but you you got to let them think. Think about what they've done. You can't just let them, like, basically just use you and abuse you. No, the world doesn't work like that. Look at this picture, friends. How it started versus how it's going. Look at this, how it started. MetaMask and Uniswap pulled swap support for Richard Hart's HEX token following the U.S. Securities and Exchange lawsuit against the founder. By the way, Richard is still fighting for their rights. That's the funny part with 11 lawyers, okay? So that's how it started. Look how it's going. Look at that essay. Bang, 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 bang. Friends, look at the type of stuff that Hayden's playing. Well, I'll play some angel music for him because this is basically... You think, like, your, your reputation, man, like, it's basically, it's, it's razor thin right now. Like, literally hanging on by a string right here. Just lucky. You're lucky that we have some sort of remorse and mercy when it comes to this. By the way, still not using Uniswap. We have PulseX, our actual real proper DeFi exchange, okay? And you own the casino. If you own the token, PulseX, right? So, Hayden says, Today, Uniswap Labs received a Wells notice from the corrupt SEC. I'm not surprised. Just annoyed. Disappointed. Ready to fight. Bro. Sorry, look, I'm making it really hard to bet on this guy. Like, you have the most pencilist of pencil necks in the same sense as saying, I'm just annoyed and disappointed, but I guess I'm ready to fight. Bro, step it up. Call them what they are, semen demons. Okay, they drink soy milk. I know you do as well, but hey, try some protein, bro. 30 grams, two scoops a day. Do some push-ups. When I first set out to build Uniswap, he says, the goal wasn't to reimagine finance, blah, 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 blah. So basically, it, it, oh, isn't it funny? Isn't it funny? This is this is literally a love letter from Richard Hart to the world, pretty much. It's, you could just replace it. It's the same thing, right? It was an experiment in a radically decentralized, fully automated on-chain market. Oh, oh you, so, so you're fully decentralized, you're fully automated, but it, we aren't. Hypocrisy, man. Like, I don't know what to think. I can't even read this guy's joke stuff. But, you know, at the, at the end of the day, we'll put out a hand. We'll put out a hand. We stand up for everyone. Like I said for you, friends. Like I said, okay. I didn't have any Luna. I stood up for the victims. No Celsius. I stood up for the victims. FTX exchange and people who sucked off Soy Bankman Freed's cucumber were absolutely pooping on me. You should have seen the messages. Oh, yeah, just all of these. They all got wrecked. In SBF, I still stood up for them. Also, eHex Maxis, there were no eHex Maxis, people who wanted to support eHex, okay? A lot of people, unfortunately, have been DCAing. Yes, I stood up for them too. I am not biased whatsoever, all right? And now here comes Uniswap. Guess what? I stand up for you guys. And if anybody else wants to drink soy, free. It's a free world. You can do that as you please, and we'll stand up for you too. Everyone's uniting against the corrupt SEC. They have no leg to stand on, by the way, friends. You have a leg to stand on, and guess what? It's not even really me saying it. You were here July 31st of 2023 when the corrupt SEC did that very, very nasty post against Richard Hart and 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 Hex. And you saw it right now, friends. You know when that article came out? All the way down here. Thank you very much for the buy of a lifetime. Nice scooping prices. Cool. And if you want to send it back there, I'll keep buying too. So thank you guys. You don't know what you're doing. You all run over each other to just chase, you to chase the same narratives over and over. And you never, you basically, friends, they're always going to where the puck, puck is. Okay, they're never going to where it's actually going. They're never going to where it's moving, all right? Now, we've had one, two, three, four, five red weekly candles for Pulse. And I hope there's some sort of rounded bottom so we can actually go up for once. That'd be nice. But just to remind you guys, like the uh, the total ecosystem is like, you know, 3.8 billion valuation altogether. So doing like a six to seven X from here pretty much flips Cardanzo and enters top 10. Hey, I think we should be there, to be honest. I really think we should be there. Just the ferocity and the strength and everyone out here. It's just that the daily users need to be high up at all. But maybe the daily users increase if Tangang and everyone else, maybe the memes keep pumping. Friends. That's what we might come down to. For example, if you're looking at Dick with, but there's been an overnight move. It's almost back to 3 million market cap now. I remember a lot of people trying to give flag fence. It was what a peak at like five, six, seven. Doesn't really matter, man. I have new resistances here for you. It's called the Dickening. The Dickening up here, 1 billion market cap. So come rocket right now is 15 million market cap. Friends, like, come on. Why should why should Dick with, but not be come rocket size right now? Come rocket is like a dead coin made by that girl who, you know, she's a lovely girl, but she said uh, it's to support um, OnlyFans girls' rights and stuff. But that was, I don't, I'm not making it up. 2021 narrative, so it's crazy. And it actually hit 400 million market cap because Elon Musk shielded it, okay? So pretty much 
Come Rock has 15 million today. Like, why should Dick with Butt, the cute, lovable memes everyone's keeping alive, why should that be one fifth of the size of Come Rock? It shouldn't be, you know? And then after that, we come for the teddy bear. By the way, I do own teddy bear. I love teddy bear. I just think, I think they're both cute and lovable. I think they should be near the same, to be honest. I think it should be like, you know, Dick with Butt and Teddy Bear should be both 20 to 30 million markup. That's personally what I think. But today's a day, friends, where all the legal people are going to come out. I know Mr. Adam Cochran and everyone else like, oh, man, guys, I know. If if you're you're a legal dude, like, oh, man, you're a special type of human. Like, friends, these people literally, they just wait all year. And then when anything like legal related appears in crypto, like these people ejaculate so hard. Like, Brent, where have you guys been sitting and just waiting? Just chill out. Chill out. And they love just long, lengthy essays and words. I know that's useful. It's useful for court stuff. But I'm like, man, like we have the world's best digital Ponzi casino out here for life-changing games. You write an essays? You write an essays? Look at the cute dick we've got. This is funny, by the way. I'm going to end with this clip, friends. I played it for you before, but look at this. Where does Richard Hart live? I'm and can sure. we go get him? There, I'm Please. sure they're going after. I'm sure it's some. I'm. They can't just go after the influencers. You're not Richard Hart, right? right? Yes. So he was bankless, right? Calling for the corrupt SEC back then to go for Richard Hart. How the tables turned. How the tables turned, man. Because now corrupt SEC goes for benevolent, right? Uniswap. Uniswap is a security exchange, according to them. Uni is a securities token itself. By the way, friends, it's kind of funny. Just to let you know, do you want to know how like how rigged the system is? This is funny. Do you want, do you want to talk about fake DeFi? Like, it, you, you, want, you don't want to talk about fake DeFi, friends? I'll show you fake DeFi. Okay. Uniswap, so this is a funny part. Okay. Uniswap delist hex saying basically your securities, they're basically saying you're fake DeFi. Look who owns Uniswap. You want to see? You want to see? I don't think you're ready, friends. Look at all these VC scum investors. Blockchain fund, Cherry Bink, version one, more like virgin one, blockchain capital, Maven 11, Ribbit capital, Ribbit. That's funny. Look at this. Cuckbase, Union Square. Look at all these. Parify, Polychain, Crapital, Paradigm, A16, all these VC scums. Look at this. Look at the amounts they raised. 1.8 million, 175 million. They're all on side, by the way. Look at this. Coinbase is on side, wow, Coinbase is on side 5,000x right now. That's crazy. $1 million raise. They were, oh my gosh, that's nuts. Actually, their market cap might have been different by the allocation, but you can see, man, $1 million raise. That, that's just, that's stupid. That's absolutely, well, they might be actually on side 5,000x. That, that's nuts. Wow. How many tokens were they given? See, see, see that, friends, all these other people, 11 million, they're on side like 100 to 300x. There's VC, literally VC insiders. You understand? VC, it's like the definition of fake DeFi. How are you real DeFi when all of these VC insiders own something? Where are the people here? Okay, where are the people? You see that? So they, they take, they took $180 million of people's, people's money. See, that's where the hypocrisy comes because a lot of the crypto industry is like this. But yet at the end of the day, I'm going to be stupid. We know. People just care about number go up. Put the price go up, no one really cares. Yeah, but that's that's pretty sad, right? This, just so you know, friends, just so you know, this is the reality of what everything goes on. So I'm not telling you that their coins can't pump more than Pulse Chain, Pulse X and Hex or any of this. I'm not saying that. I'm just, because it would be nice if the real DeFi stuff just pumped harder because there's less middlemen to dump along the way. It would be nice. It's just that there's no correlation right now. But I'm just letting you know, for the next time, and there will be a next time when there's deep, red monthly candles and people are saying it's over because and they're going to throw out these words and narratives it's fake DeFi and this and that when they say that just know it's all bs okay know that it's all bs complete bs because now you know the truth you know the truth is that all of it just comes down to network effects not what people say are these words here and there and you know there's a strong cult in pulse chain pulse x and hex community and yeah the money went to soylana for the past five months but you've got to play for the whole bull market man where are we going to be if ETH, ETH BTC goes to 0.06 or 7 or 8? Where's Soilana going to be? Is the money going to rotate out Soilana into Coinbase? These are the things they have to worry about because they've already made their money here and the market's already priced them in. Because here's the thing, friends, honestly, if you're holding Soilana tokens and you've topped out now, you don't have to come back for like 15 months. That's the truth. That's the honest truth. So... I'm not trying to scare everybody, but yeah, if you made life-changing gains, or even life, if you made good gains in Solana tokens, you should you should be taking profit hard because 
you have already had your turn now. You've had your turn. In fact, it's overstayed the welcome. You might, well, here's the thing, no one's even saying this. They could not pump for like another 12 months. It's possible. It's possible. Who's to say that, okay, yes, you have the million users now, but what if the money's rotating elsewhere? These people are like locusts. They don't care. They'll switch, switch networks straight away. So that's something you've got to think about. If your chain hasn't pumped, now you've got to think, okay, is it going to pump in the future or is it expensive now? I don't think Pulse Chain, for example, is expensive now. I don't think we've seen anywhere near the euphoria because of how small the market caps of the altcoins are, okay? But that's for another time. Like, subscribe, belly button, or catch you soon.